Well, this one reacts to everything. And this one... In today's video, we're going to see what happens if we take a plasma ball and turn it on underwater. If you've never seen these plasma globes, they're pretty fun. It's basically a tiny Tesla coil inside of a glass bulb, really a funny shaped glass bulb that specifically goes right over the Tesla coil. You add your hand as a path of electricity and all of those little tendrils move toward it. Here's the basic idea. We've got a couple different sizes of plasma balls, a fun little lamp toy, and we're going to play around with them. I wanna see what happens if we play around with them in a few ways. What happens if we put them under water, put them near foil? Can we use them to start a fire? Are magnets gonna do anything to them? We might have to break one open as well. Callie was telling me that they're usually full of neon and maybe a slight mix of some of the other noble gases. Xenon, krypton, and argon are the other ones that you can sometimes see in there. Those are some of the noble gases. That would be the elements that show up on the far right side of the periodic table. They're gases that are not very reactive because their outer valence shell is perfectly full, which means they don't want to give away or take any new electrons. So they're very unreactive to other elements, but they are fairly reactive to the right kind of electric exposure, which is why you hear of something called a neon sign. That's because they fill glass tubes with neon gas and then run electricity through it. And it gives you this very particular orangey pink color, which you can see really nicely. This might also be neon, it might be one of the other colors, but the different gases all glow different colors. That's what they've got inside, and probably not much. It might be a low pressure system as well. It's set to a near atmospheric pressure. Okay, so not very low. So today we've got all of these and we wanna try some fun experiments with them. Grant's done some experiments with these. He had a giant one. I think he did some fun experiments with that and then he smashed it with a hammer. So Nate's first idea was to uh, put one in water and that sounds really cool. Uh, put the glass in the water, just the glass. Well, it certainly likes to go to the glass. Now I should say we are using just tap water here. Mm -hmm. This is not distilled or anything. They're traveling differently now. The yeah. little lines in that one are traveling much slower than They're the ones in this one. They're slower and thicker lines. They're following the drops of water. Like they can't decide where to go. Also, new fun trick. Oh yeah, it's like leaving a little trail of pink behind. It follows your hand now. Water is allowing that current to stay basically. Before we look at the big ones, let's talk about the tiny ones for a second. Yeah, These little ones come apart really easily. So this tube, just so you know, is still completely sealed. But in here, you have what's basically steel wool. I think it's just a bunch of metal mesh. Let's and then I out. think some kind of metal has been applied to the glass itself down at the end. Oh, it is, it's a baby Tesla. Zap, zap, zap. That's getting my finger real nice. Yeah, but now you can see my skin smoking. Good. That hurts, so I want to do it a lot. I did lick the desktop Tesla coil once. Don't do that. There we go. This way it doesn't hurt me. That's a little arky boy. Actually, right before it forms the arc, mm -hmm. a very small dimple appears in the water. Okay, now go ahead and pull it out. Yeah, you see that? It's sucking everything towards it and shooting it down. Okay, oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, that one looks like it went up. It's pulling like dust particles towards it and then shooting them down into yeah. the water. Yeah. Let me add a little bit of cinnamon for you. Wow. They're just driving it down. So when you put the Tesla coil into that glass bulb, it's got all of those noble gases, it actually sort of gives those electrons a path to follow, which is that tentacle that you see that's constantly moving. I can't help but wonder if that's what we're seeing, is sort of that line of electrons without the big glass ball and noble gases. Very fun little accidental discovery. Oh, before I put that on, let's pull out some of the metal shavings and take a look. Is it just one piece of filament? Okay, so it is like- It's like a super coarse grit steel wool. Mm -hmm. I think that helps the electrical connection be mm -hmm. in full contact with all of that in there. Well, I wanted to see what result we get with the larger one. Okay, go for it. Well, now I'm curious if like the surface thing would work too. Yes, oh, that's so pretty. The whole thing's pink. It's actually behaving pretty much normally. Yeah, what happens if I put my finger under the water with it? Try it. 
doesn't really care. It does. It's like I can't your find finger, anything your, your right now. Your finger isn't more interesting than the water around He's it. He's trying to just find, yeah, find the water. And find. it's coated in cinnamon. The aluminum conducts electricity better than the finger, but if it's just the sheet of aluminum, it doesn't have anywhere to go. This is looking for a path to travel. But Ow. if you touch the aluminum, as Cal just demonstrated, um, I didn't know. <laughs> it has a direction. And look, I can even just, if I get close to it, so I'm not touching it yet, but you can see that one of the tendrils like focuses quite a bit more. Yep. You know, not there. I mean, some of the tendrils are still pointing at it and sort of staying to it, but they're not really going anywhere. The aluminum can't absorb much charge. But then if you actually touch the foil, it will jump. And you saw how it was making an arc to the water. That can also happen to your finger. Or if you don't want it to zap your finger and hurt, uh -huh. it can hold another piece. Our camera guy's monitor is having a little bit of trouble with this right now. His monitor does not like the electromagnetic something. Oh. Oh wow. Okay. Um, oh. Did it die? Oh no. Mark, did we break your monitor? We might have broken it. What the oh, heck? No. <laughs> Mark, I'm so sorry. Try turning it off and back on again. We're good. Oh, sweet. Woo! All right, let's not do that again. Let's do it again. <laughs> let's so not break the monitor again. All right, we can try and burn some of this. Of course we are. Oh. Yeah, keep it flat and just have it in contact with it. And I'm mm -hmm. gonna see if I can burn right through the paper. What's your drawing? Good lines. Can we get an actual fire? Mm. When you had the flat of it, you had actually quite a bit going there. But look at that, it's neat. Fun tricks with the plasma globe. Want to put an entire one under the water and turn it on? Sure. Let's start with Just this guy. risk of shock is only as much as three or four batteries. <laughs> Battery housing, I think, is not waterproof. So Good. the batteries, I think, are gonna get surrounded Good by point. water. Cavity is now filling with water. I'm actually surprised it's still doing anything. Yeah. Because those batteries have just gotta be swimming at this point. Surprisingly, continues to function despite having being submerged. Gonna turn that off for a second. Okay, while you're prepping that, I wanted to see if magnets do anything to them. Okay. So I've got a magnet here. So far, at this distance, the field seems unaffected. Okay, here it is, but then it's also conductive and I'm touching it. So let's see if I'm just gonna set this and take my hand away. It's about like the foil. There's a tiny, tiny bit that's gathering right around it. But until I get my hand there, Oh, there's a uh, metal filings on the outside of this magnet and the plasma is igniting them. Nate, check this one out. Oh, well, it's certainly doing something with the power supply or pull it all the down. path of electricity, yeah. So my plan won't work quite the same, but we can still push this down into the water. So once it's surrounded, yeah. it, it just connects, well, it was just connecting to the neck down at the bottom. It started to move back to the rest of the globe a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanna change things up a little bit and just to see if it makes any difference, I want to change the conductivity of the water. So I'm gonna add a lot of salt. Now, what do you think will happen? Not a lot. I don't think it's actually gonna change too much. Okay. But I just had to test if having it be more conductive will do anything or not. Start, plasma ball, just gonna bring this near the water. Doesn't look like it's too I think it's yet. it's about the same. I think it might be sending a little bit more charge down into it. I could see that, yeah. That is cool though. With the salt water on the glass, yeah. if I touch any part of it, like larger portions of it light up pink. That is really pink. cool. It's not just trailing after your finger. It's like you've made tie-dye. So I think it's working the same. The only difference is that the cinnamon no longer sinks as well because yeah. the salinity of the water makes it so the cinnamon is more buoyant in it. So now I'm trying to drive something that floats down into the water instead of something that sinks. That one little blob is just acting weird. So about the same, mm -hmm. pretty much the same reaction with salt water and tap water. Tap water may already have enough in it that it just is going to work like that. All right, just seeing what happens if I pour some vapor down on it. It's neat. I don't think it's doing much. No. It looks like it could make a cool photo maybe, a, a <laughs> little smoking plasma ball, but. Go for actual liquid nitrogen liquid. 
It's not even registering. Does not seem to do anything. Well. Okay. Nothing. So if we want a more likely breaking of the glass, I can just take this and turn it upside down so it's in contact with the liquid nitrogen. I'll leave that one up to you. Let's try it. <laughs> and of course it doesn't want to stay creating a perfect seal because it's pressurized. Is it tempered glass? No, just the shape. Well, I'm gonna say that uh, being cold does not much affect the plasma ball. You froze it! I did. Oh, that's cool though. It makes your fingerprints go spiky. Look at that. But it looks like little sun rays. Well, let's break one. Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Neat. I can hear it trying yeah. to do things. It's still kind of going. This one's like frozen in place now. Like, yeah. Because of the water droplets, it uh -huh. like only wants to go to those. And so the, the little Medusa fibers aren't going anywhere. They're mm -hmm. just like, these are my spots. <laughs> these are currently set on sound mode, which makes them react to sound. This one's more sensitive and they seem to react to lower notes better. Guys, despite our best efforts, today's experiments were surprisingly gentle. We still have two larger working plasma globes. Is there anything else you want to see us do with these? Let us know in the comments below. Tell us to get bigger ones because that'd be really fun. And then tell me some way I can involve my torch. Guys, that's not all. We've always got more to see. Click the box at the top to check out our most recent video and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.